in, in Psalm 130, the, the psalmist declared, if you had kept a record of my sins, who could stand? But then he goes on to, to say, but you have forgiven me. You've for, forgiven me my sin. You, you have, have cleansed me. You have purified me. Uh, one of the, the seraphs, it says, went and, and took a coal off the altar of God and, and touched Isaiah's lips with that coal. And in touching Isaiah's lips, it was not an issue that his, his lips were burned, but, but at that point, in, in touching with his lips with a, a coal from the altar of God, Isaiah was purified. Isaiah was, was forgiven. He was made whole. And it says, after he was purified, Isaiah responded by saying, Here I am, Lord. Send me. I find it interesting that, that God didn't put the call out for Isaiah, and then Isaiah said yes. But rather, because he was confronted with God's holiness, and because he was confronted with his own sin, because he experienced forgiveness and being purified, Isaiah said, here I am, Lord, send me. Whatever you want me to do, I'm yours. I'm willing to be used by you. Now, everyone's call doesn't happen that way. Everyone uh, doesn't respond in the same way. I think of the story of Moses. You know, Moses' call came from a burning bush. It said as Moses was approaching this burning bush that, that was burning but, but not being consumed, he heard a voice that, that said, Take off your sandals, Moses, for, for you're walking on holy ground. And God gave Moses the, the call, but Moses was resistant. He was resistant to that call. He, he was resistant to, to saying yes. And, and God had to, to be persistent before, before Moses finally said yes. You know, I think about the, the disciples. You know, they didn't necessarily have a, a call like Isaiah seeing a vision or, or Moses seeing a, a burning bush. I, I think of, of Peter... And uh, he was down doing his job fishing, you know, off, off the shore of the, the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus said, come follow me. And when Peter started following Jesus, I really don't think Peter knew what all that meant. But Jesus gave an, an, gave an invitation, and he was willing to say yes. He was willing to say, yes, Lord, I, I'm willing to follow you. I'm willing to do whatever it is that, that you want me to do. There are lifelong calls to pastors and missionaries. But I also believe that, that God gives each of us a call. A call to be his disciple each and every day. And so will we be as eager as, as Peter and say, yes, Lord, I'll, I'll follow you. I'll, I'll do whatever it is that you want me to do. Will, will we be like Isaiah? We'll say, Lord, I don't know what it is that you want me to do, but I'm willing to say yes. Here I am, Lord. Use me. Dwight and, and his wife were, were contacted by a, a crisis pregnancy center. They had a, a teenage girl who was pregnant. She had been kicked out of her home, and she needed a place to, to stay, a, a, a family to live with. And so as Dwight and his wife got the, the phone call that, that there was this girl that needed a place to, to stay, you know, they prayed about what they were to do, but... But when they came to a conclusion, they said, what else can we do but say yes? You know, as we seek to be disciples living our lives for, for Jesus, there's a girl with a need, and we have a home that, that can help her. How can we not take her in? Was this God calling them through the crisis pregnancy center? They saw a need and, and they were willing to respond. And, and I believe that what, was, what they were saying yes to was they were saying yes to living as a disciple day by day. God's call does not come to each of us exactly the, the same way, nor is his call for us each the same. In the case of, of Moses, the call was specifically to, to lead the, the children of Israel out of bondage. For, for Isaiah, the Lord was looking for someone to, uh, who, who was willing to, to speak for him. And, 
And Isaiah said, here I am, Lord. Send me. Isaiah responded to God's calling without knowing exactly what it is that God was calling him to, to do. When it comes to responding to to God's call. It may be a lifetime commitment of doing a a certain vocation. It may be a a commitment to a a season in your life. Or it may be saying yes to living as a disciple day by day, making the most of the opportunities God gives to you in order to make a difference for his kingdom. I believe that Soup for the Soul, a a ministry of this church, was, was established because of a calling that that God gave to to some women. A a calling for them to to fix meals for those who were hungry. And many of you know the the story of Soup for the Soul, and it meets twice a month here in the the basement of the church. It's not that God was calling these women to a a lifelong vocation that they were going to, uh, all of the hours of their days were going to be given to, to this endeavor of Soup for the Soul, but it was a ministry that was established because God called them, because God put a burden on their heart. And they said, yes, here I am. Use me. Here I am. Send me. The the tutoring that happens on on Tuesday evenings after school is because of a a burden placed on on the heart of of some people, of of the the needs of of children that needing some help with homework after school. God wasn't calling anyone to a lifetime vocation in in that tutoring program. But there were people who were willing to say yes. You know, yes, we're willing to start this tutoring, and, and yes, I'm willing to help kids, and, and saying, Lord, I, I'm willing to live as your disciple. I'm willing to, to help kids in the name of Christ. Here I am, send me. Here I am, use me. God does not depend upon great people to do great things. But God depends upon ordinary people who are willing to be used by him to do great things. If I were to ask you this morning, if God's called you, does, has God given you gifts to use in his service? Has God called you in, into ministry? Probably many of you would say, no, I, I have nothing to give. I have no gifts. I have no talents. I don't have anything that could be used um, to, to move God's kingdom forward. But if someone called you up and said that the church was doing a funeral meal, could you bring a a dish to help with that carrying meal? Without hesitation, you would say, sure, I can bring food to help out. Well, God is using you in an ordinary thing to make a difference in the life of of a grieving family. Or what if someone's been in the hospital And as they return home from the hospital, they they need someone to sit with them for for an afternoon. And you say, oh sure, I can go and sit with them. I can help them in their their time of of convalescing. But God can't use me. God calls us, God uses us in ordinary things of every day. Ordinary opportunities that we have that we can reach out and be His hands and feet. Maybe at school it's, it's looking for that that new kid that's trying to to find their way. Maybe it's looking out for that kid that that others pick on and to stand up for them and and help them in in the midst of of difficult times. God is calling us to live as disciples wherever we find ourselves day by day. Many people wait for a vision like, like Isaiah had or they wait for a burning bush experience like like Moses had. And without such an experience, they say, oh, well, God hasn't called me. God is calling each of us to be his hands and feet each and every day, to to look for opportunities where we can reach out with his love, with his compassion, to make a difference in the world in, in which we live. 